Finding a proper place to stay in a foreign country always requires great effort, especially if you are a digital nomad looking for a several months staying. And even if you are planning a one-day trip, you should know exactly what to see and what to do without losing any time. Therefore, I've created the checklist which help us to get all the ducks in a row. And I'm glad to share it with you guys in this episode about Qashqais, Portugal. We'll go through such parts. How long would I stay in Qashqais for? What is Qashqais famous for? Hot spots of Qashqais, transport and infrastructure. And finally, cost of living in Qashqais. Portugal. Let's get it! Actually, I stayed in Qashqais for one month and I should admit I would definitely repeat the experience for at least two months more. Those narrow streets and welcoming parks make this town a truly fascinating place to live or stay. A great number of sites and attractions made Qashqais one of the best day trips from Lisbon. This is a traditional and charming Portuguese fishing town, which has developed into a popular resort town. Historically, Qashqais was the summer retreat of the Portuguese nobility. And today the town is a great mix of its historic heritage with the expectations of the digital nomads and tourists from all around the world. The beaches of Qashqais are glorious and gorgeous. Surrounding the town are the beautiful beaches of the Portuguese Riviera, while to the north is the wild and untamed Serra de Sintra coastline. So, Qashqais is a wonderful destination both for holiday or for long-term staying. It is a really more than beach-based holiday destination, with its vast surfing beaches and dramatic natural scenery. There is so much to laugh about Qashqais, either for a holiday destination, long-term staying or just one day trip. There are world-class hotels, family-run restaurants and vibrant nightlife, all set within the traditional streets of the historic center. And there are endless activities, adventures and water sports that you can do in Qashqais. And if you're a culture enthusiast, Qashqais has a lot of museums, 18 museums and even its own orchestra. And this is one of the best hotspots here in Qashqais. Look at this amazing, incredible, terrific, beautiful. What else can I say about this spot? Okay, we are ready to go. When I live here in Qashqais, I usually came here and just chilled. And here is a to-do list what you should do in Qashqais. The first thing that I advise you to do is to surf or swim at one of the beaches in Qashqais. You just have to enjoy the famous Pastel de Nata in the historic center of the town. Try hiking or cycling through the great scenery of the Parque Natural de Sintra Qashqais. In addition, watch the sunset at Cabo da Roca. It's about 20 kilometers from the town. And of course, visit the colorful and unique Sintra. Just a short train ride takes you to the center of Sintra with its amazing palaces and green hills. We are going to Sintra and it's a real hidden gem of Portugal. Enjoy the episode. And there is so much to see in Sintra. The Palacio Nacional da Pena. One of the Europe's finest palaces with a vividly painted exterior and the interior restored to how it appeared in 1910 when the Portuguese nobility fled the country. Ah, 
unfortunately, Sintra often gets very crowded in the summer. This can mean long queues for admission tickets, tourist buses running out of space. And my advice to you, never drive to Sintra. The narrow hill roads were never designed for today's heavy traffic. And there is almost no car parking. In the summer, there's a constant traffic jam as frustrated drivers search for car parking spaces. But Sintra itself is amazing. Those castles look like a Legoland, so colorful and bright, surrounded by beautiful green hills. Guys, sorry, but we have to get some fuel. It's been ages since I last tried uh, McDonald's. Cheers. McDonald's is nice when you are in a lack of time driving the whole day. It's a nice compromise, you know. And Sintra is great. Very green and so beautiful, <laughs> you know, man. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's like Bali Island in Europe, you know. This is exactly why I like Portugal because every part of the small country is so different what's even more important this is like one of the greatest benefits to be a digital nomad and you see the trick <laughs> try funny time <laughs> well from Cascais, there are many fascinating day trips, including Lisbon, Sintra, Ericeira, and Praia das Massas, all of which are easily accessible by public transport. But for me, the best transport is scooter, because it's very cheap and convenient to get around the town, especially if you don't have a car in Portugal. But of course, you can always rent one. Talking about prices, for instance, car rental will cost you around 40 to 70 euros per day. It's for small cars. It's a great choice if you are planning to go from Cascais to Porto. It's about 300 kilometers to the north or to Algarve in the south. But anyway, you can always take a bus or a train. It's much cheaper. I prefer traveling by car because I can always stop wherever I wish to make some aerial footages from drone or just to have lunch somewhere in the middle of nowhere with amazing ocean views. A meal for two in the central part of Kashkash will cost you around 30-35 euro. Still, you can always find lower prices though, especially in a low season. The Portuguese cuisine is very delicious. Lera ordered uh, a catfish, it's a national fish of Portugal. In Portugal, they call it bacalhau. Smells good. And I ordered a Brazilian steak. I guess it will be also fine. Bon appetit! Obrigada. If you are looking for an apartment for several days, check the current prices on Airbnb or Booking.com. But if you are about to stay here for several months, go to Idealista platform. But make sure that Portuguese people will force you to sign a contract and pay at least three monthly payments forward. As for mobile internet, it's very vital for digital nomads like me. The price is about 10 euros for 10 gigabytes, but the price may vary in different providers. The prices for vegetables, seafood, meat, and all the groceries are cheaper than in the rest of the Western European countries, I have to admit. From 400 to 500 euros per month is enough for your groceries. 
Qashqash is loved by natives and people who have ever been to it at least once. And if you are a digital nomad, it might be a bit boring for you here comparing to Madeira or Ericeira, because those two are loved by digital specialists and online business owners all around the world. And I'm going to go there as well. And if earlier Qashqai was known as a land of kings and fishermen, now Qashqai is trying to be known as a land of a digital nomad. The president of Qashqai Tourism Board stated that the province and municipality of Qashqai has everything what digital nomads look for, from co-working spaces to their highest internet speeds in the world. Among these multicultural population and English-speaking locals, as a part of Portugal, one of the safest countries in the world, Qashqai is no exception. And it is suitable for both families and digital nomads. And join up our community of digital nomads. I'll put the link to our Telegram channel where you can find all the needed information.